Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video True, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, where last time I confidently declared we were beginning a period of war against the Pope, where we would just basically smash our way through Europe, recreate the Roman Empire, and everything would be wonderful. And as it turned out, it wasn't quite that easy. We managed to burn through maybe a third of our entire army and maybe 2,000 gold, just claiming, yeah, a tiny bit of Egypt down here. And we don't even have 100% of that yet. And threat is just going up so damn fast that at this point, if I were to keep attacking, yeah, every single one of the Islamic and Jewish factions would be in tow. And that is not gonna fly. These guys have got 16,000 right over here. You've only got 7,000 right now. You're not doing great. Then, of course, yeah, we've actually got these bastards over here who we don't pay much in the way of attention to. There's another 12,000 troops right over there. Everything in Spain. Don't forget, yes, the very large Jewish super states floating around in this game. They've not got nothing either. There's no chance I can beat literally everybody in the world at the same time. So, don't worry. I've got myself a plan here. You see, Catholicism's basically decided it's scared of me. But by me, they just mean, you know, my personal commands, my personal troops, etc, etc. Serbia, bit of Rome, bit of Alexandria, Constantinople, all of that good stuff. But, uh, they don't seem to have any such problems with, you know, my vassals. And my vassals have been doing very well for themselves. In particular, Greece now holds a significant amount of southern France... Thrace has been consistently pushing into Romaine, and now, even little Croatia is doing a good job smashing the hell out of Italy. So basically, the situation right now is I need to control a bunch of territory in this part of the world, in northern Italy, and my vassals are pretty close by. So if I can't take it directly, then all I need to do is empower my vassals to do it for me. Okay, step one, we've got ourselves Greece over here, though yeah, when the last guy died, Toulouse and a bit more territory just started reporting directly into me. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hand all of that straight back over to Greece's control. I want Greece to be as powerful as possible because they've already got themselves, hang on, yeah, they've got a de jure claim right over here. They already own this bit of land right here. So if they go and take that next, and at that point, they're bordering Romaine. And Romaine, here we go, this is part of the territory I need to take over, Genoa. So if they were to just expand into Romaine, that would be flipping perfect. So yeah, all I'm going to do is transfer the vassalage of these three territories straight back over to the new king of Greece. And also I can't help but notice, he's being tutored by a Catholic, of all things. Admittedly... A Catholic in, yeah, duty, childhood. But just in case, we'll be moving that over to somebody safer. There we go. Greece is now a hole over there. And also, hang on. Sorry, need to hand over this to you as well. Missed one. Okay, now he's got everything. And with those new vassals, he's gonna have more troops. That gets him up to 13,000 men. Valencia's technically got 12,000, but Valencia also has shall we say, a few problems right now. So in theory, Greece could, yeah, take a little bit of Valencia and start moving into Romaine very easily because Romaine is basically, at this point, easy pickings. And their defensive pact is against me, not the vassals. Also, thing I'm very glad I just noticed over here, yes, young King Perrin of Anatolia has come of age and hates me right now because he really wants to be on the council. That's fine. We can find a spot for you because actually, you are pretty bloody good. Though irritatingly, you did end up being the wrong sort of Hellenic, but what can you do, eh? Anyway, let's get you nice and married. Hilariously, he won't marry my own daughter because he considers me an infidel. Because he believes in Jupiter and I believe in Zeus. Right, you, my good man, will make a very competent marshal. And yes, the new king of Thrace would also ideally like to be on the council, but he loves me for now, so no rush on that, because he's kind of terrible. Okay, step two. The king of Wallachia, Trebizond, and Sicily. Ah, oh, wait, hang on, no. Just Wallachia and Sicily, actually. Trebizond has now broken away. Okay, so that gavel kind I set up did actually sort of work. 
So, the territory I need down in the south of Italy is the rest of Latium, the rest of Ferrara, and the rest of Capua. Which I believe is just this one tiny territory right over here. De Ure. Yes, Duchy of Capua. I've already got half of it here. I just need the other bit. So, ideally, what I would like you to do is head in this direction and at some point kick Amalfi out of their territory on mainland Italy. And honestly... Amalfi are probably weaker than they have been for some time because they've just lost a fairly major war against one of these factions over here. So they've just lost a significant portion of their African holdings. It doesn't mean they've got nothing, mind. They've still got a good, yeah, 5,000 troops and that will go up to more like uh, 6,000, 6,500 once they've recovered. So, 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 here's where we start being clever. We need to, uh, yeah, deal with some of this nonsense, which is, uh, right now, their cities are, you know, relatively well defended. There's a massive army just chilling out right here for some reason. But I can take care of those. I can do the groundwork for my own vassals. I can't declare war. The entire world would declare war on me. But I'm a pagan. I can just flipping raid. Tear down their walls, destroy their vassals, take out their retinues, and leave them so soft and squishy that at some point, hopefully, they will become an irresistible target for the new king of Sicily and Wallachia. And as for the final frontier up here, this one's a bit messy, and Thrace has already been doing a good, competent job. They've moved over here, and they're trying to take a bit of territory off Italy, moving very slowly towards Venice. If they'd like to take Venice, or maybe Ragusa would like to get involved, uh, that would just be marvellous, because yes, the actual city of Venice needs to go down. So uh, I need to also, if I can, bleed Italy dry. Though Italy's already having its own problems, by the way. Pretty major rebellion going on right now. Yeah, revolt with about, yeah, three and a half thousand troops versus, uh, oh dear, the king of Italy only on 1,500, uh, and he's pretty much out of money too. Good. Good, good, good. So that should be easy pickings. So no need to worry about that for the time being. I can focus my attention down over here. Though I can't help but notice that, uh, yeah, right now Thrace appears to be having a a small revolt over... Is that just over tyranny? Oh, bloody hell, there's, there's some really good long names here. Yeah, it's just about tyranny. So you guys could really do with standing the flip down and letting Thrace just get on with slowly squeezing into this territory. Because eventually, these guys might even make it to Ferrara. Though actually, I am rather surprised that uh, the Rector of Ragusa only has uh, 3,000 troops. That feels like a very small number. I swear you guys have had way more than that in the past. Yeah, they're in no position to take on Venice directly. I mean, in theory, I could just burn Venice's entire trade network to the ground forever. But if I were to do that, then, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that would be a war. So everybody would hate me. So that's going to be tricky to do. Venice is doing it very nicely for itself. In fact, actually, they might have eaten some of the territory that was just freed up by me going and stealing Alexandria. So, that's Italy. Three-pronged approach, and hopefully my own vassals will start moving in and clearing out all of that territory on my behalf. Now, if they can do that, that'd be very convenient, because that means all I need to do is deal with uh, Carthage, uh, the tiny little leftover bit of Alexandria, and Jerusalem. But actually, hang on. I've just had a thought. I can't attack these guys, because if I were to do so, yeah, that's war against literally everybody. But... These guys have not got that much in the way of troops right now. If I was to hand Alexandria straight over to my son Theseus, however, he would actually have, yeah, he's already got 2,000. He's going to have even more once those troops start building up a bit. He could very easily do that. Whether he'll choose to do so or not, I don't know, but he could without starting a war with literally everyone in the world. Honestly, that's probably the smart play, because I do not want to start another massive world war to take one tiny holding, because yeah, I can just go to war with these guys right now, and even though it is the most justified war in the world, uh, literally everybody, including Islamic factions, will jump in to defend the flipping Knights Templar and their one tiny castle just outside Alexandria for some reason. 
yeah, I'm gonna do it. Though admittedly, yes, this does raise um, a bit of a question here, which is, uh, this is my son, and right now the heir to uh, literally everything. The Empire, the Pontifex Maximus position, the kingdoms, the duchies, the counties, he gets the lot, but he's developed cancer at only 22. Now, I've seen young characters in good health with cancer last for decades in this game, but a big question now presents itself, which is, in what order are people going to die? Because if I die before he does, then as a result of that, he will become the new Pope and Emperor. It might be for a very small period of time, but he will. If he predeceases me, logically, everyone will go over to my second son, his brother, Polyphemus. However, there's a second question as well, which is, he's now got himself a young son. The kid's only two, so if he becomes Emperor, does the son get to be an adult before he dies? Can he survive the 14 years for his son to come of age? Because if he can, and I predecease him, then the Imperial line will probably go straight down to his son. However, if he becomes Emperor but then dies before his son comes of age, then probably the Emperor line goes over to Polyphemus regardless. So, uh, yeah, things are a bit, uh, up in the air when it comes to succession right now. Still, that's by the by. I'm gonna give him Alexandria because, honestly, it doesn't generate, like... Okay, generates a fair bit of money. That's that's not a terrible amount of money. Okay, maybe we'll hold on to that for now, just while I'm rebuilding up my economy a bit, because I recently spent, you know, £2,000 on an axe, which I probably shouldn't have done, but whatever. The important point is, there's only so much I must do for myself that no one else is going to bother doing. Carthage is one. Jerusalem is another. Other than that, it is feasible that I could rely on my vassals to take Latium, Venice, Ferrara, Genoa, Capua, they're all in Italy, and my vassals are moving the flip in. So, Alexandra, I could actually leave to young Theseus. Actually, my vassals could do the work for me. Then again, I would not mind Theseus moving in and doing that sooner rather than later, because if he actually does that, then we could actually found the Myrmidons, my own holy order. Now, that would be fun. So, let's get started on the plan to bleed out the targets I want my vassals to attack. And what's even more hilarious is, I can actually use my vassals' own troops, because they don't mind being stood up. So, uh, you know what? Let's just raise 4,000 troops right there. Absolutely beautiful. I'll give you another 1,000 from Rome itself, just for absolute safety. Because, yeah, let's just double check. How many troops could you, in theory, field? You could field... Uh, about 5,000. Okay, just for absolute safety. And by the way, you're reporting to... Uh, you're reporting to Trebizond. Okay, I feel like you should not be reporting to Trebizond, but whatever. Who is the king of Trebizond, by the way? Does he consider himself, like, important enough? So, uh, no, he does not want to be on the council. Which is fine, because he's six years old and he's kind of terrible. But the forces of Trebizond, meanwhile, will be standing up. All right, all of you guys uh, meet over here in... No, actually, don't meet in the Pope's territory. Meet, like, over here in Salerno. Draw yourselves up together, and then we will form a massive raiding party to trash all of this. Here we go. 8,000 troops. You guys, please begin raiding, and then just march directly into this beautiful... Okay, um, so that question was answered fairly quickly. So Theseus is... Theseus just died. That was fast. Yep, yeah, I'm guessing he actually got some very bad treatment from his, uh, from his doctor. Um, okay, so Polyphemus it is. However, his two-year-old son that he got out does still get to be the next Duke of Alexandria. He is Hellenic, everything is under control. And with Theseus dead, here's fun, his own sister is actually the most qualified to become the next spy master. So, go on, sure, why not? So, sudden change of plans, we're now looking at more of a steward for the next emperor. Which is fine, that's what Callistos was, and Callistos was a great emperor. So this is not a problem in the slightest. And here we go, we've got ourselves someone of interest right here. We've got ourselves a Hellenic Russian person floating around who might be willing to marry him. Now, 
Admittedly, he doesn't really swing that way, but neither does she. So I feel like in many ways this is a fake marriage where basically both of them are just doing it to keep up appearances. So uh, yeah, there might be some problems with uh, children coming out of this marriage. Yeah, he's chaste and not interested in women and she wouldn't be interested in guys either. But she is a genius. All right, so her stats are really good. Even if they're never going to produce any children, that's some good stats. Then again, should I prioritize someone who is as lusty as possible to try and get at least one child out? Might not be a terrible idea, you know. I mean, her stats are good, and she would compensate for his lower stats very nicely. Okay, I'm going to roll the dice once here. I'm just going to invent a woman, because generally the invented womans are actually pretty good in there. Seems to be like no cooldown on this whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's just invent a new woman here. And, okay. So, she's got some problems, mind. But she's, okay. She's got good intrigue. Those stats are not spectacular. But she is lusty. She is nice and lusty. You know what? We're gonna go with it. Also, we're gonna do everything we can to make Polyphemus better. We're gonna be teaching him virtues, we're gonna be inspiring him, everything's gonna be beautiful. So let's try and teach him a virtue right now. So that is, uh, yeah, either temperate, or charitable, or patient. So, uh, see what we can do here. And, uh, do you just pick up charitable? So that is a good increase in diplomacy. That's very useful. Diplomacy is good for really high-ranking leisures. But wait, we're not done yet. I'm also going to be inspiring you. Give up a bit of my piety, but I've got tons of piety. That's fine. In order to make him slightly better. Hang on. What's he actually about right now? Okay, one guaranteed diplomacy. 50% more martial, but might just give him more personal combat skill, which is kind of garbage. Alternatively, learning or intrigue, because yeah, it would normally be a choice between stewardship and diplomacy, but he's already really good at diplomacy, so that's fine. Just give him the diplomacy. 10 diplomacy would be welcome. And on top of that, okay, I could get rid of one of her voices, but there's a risk. Oh, I might accidentally get rid of, you know, lustful. That could be a problem. Also, hang on, how do I... How do I do that? Here we go. Spiritual guidance. So, why can I not do that? Ah, she has to either be landed, a patrician, or a close relative. Okay, can I make her a patrician, or is that just guys? Nope, not allowed. That must just be for guys. So, uh, I mean, she is like, you know, the wife of my son. She's my daughter-in-law. That feels pretty close, but apparently in-laws don't count. Well, we need to find some land to, you know, land them with at some point. Anyway, we've moved straight on over here, and we're going to take this down in, oh, no time whatsoever. That's 2.2. Okay, so now, now we're going to make some really good money really fast. Yeah, 2.2. I'm not flipping worried by that. And you've accepted your guardianship contract. Lovely. And we'll just uh, move in over here. Oh my goodness, we've suddenly got all of the money in the world. And you've got 2,200 troops right there. Well, before reinforcements arrive, how about we just send our troops to deal with that and deploy... Why do the commanders always just unassign themselves. All right, I need more flipping commanders. Okay, bad selection on this occasion. These guys are not particularly competent. Okay, so I think he's trying to escape, but no, nope, he could not escape in time, so we're just gonna run him off in no time whatsoever. That gets me a bit of prestige and what's not, and okay, spend money to get Supply limits plus one. And prosperity up. Yeah, prosperity. I'll always take prosperity going up. That's absolutely fine. So, you're retreating right now, which is absolutely lovely. But in the meantime, we should just be able to uh, walk straight into all of this nonsense. So, oh yeah, 1.6. Just push your way in. Not a problem in the slightest. And uh, you guys want some more help. That's Kiev. And, ooh. Okay. So... You guys potentially want to go on a bit of a pilgrimage or something. I mean, I'm going to be honest. It might be fun to go on a bit of a pilgrimage because uh, there is a real possibility if I could just get him to like me enough that Kiev 
could actually become a vassal of ours by choice, which would be very fun. So yeah, sure, why not? Going on a journey's fun. We're gonna go do that for a bit. And uh, for the time being, uh, Polyphemus is actually acting as regent. So you can have a taste of being, you know, in charge. Congratulations, you just... Okay, you just got your first victory, but then you immediately got your first loss too. And uh, trade routes, yes, invest in maintaining them. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so you've decided to... Aha! Uh -huh. You've decided to try and take some of this territory straight back again. Right, so we got 3,000 right over there. These guys are 100% trying to reinforce their territories. So in which case, uh, you guys, get back over here. Please stop, you know, unassigning our own troops. Get over here and smash these guys right in the face, please. Right in the flipping face before they manage to draw together. Because, yeah, at this point we can basically just destroy all of these guys and... Uh, Okay, absolutely marvellous. I have decided to go over to Kiev. Lovely. So that is a hundred piety straight away. Didn't really need that, but whatever. You guys are having your asses handed to you. A flipping get. So yeah, basically I'm just using this as an opportunity to kick a Malfi's ass, drain their army dry, and leave their territory undefended. Because if I'm very lucky indeed, you guys will just decide to move in and help yourselves. Ah. But possibly it might not work quite like this. Because uh, I'm not just hostile. This guy is also hostile and raiding. Okay, are you choosing to be hostile and raiding? Or is my entire empire now by default? Yes. So all of my vassals are by default hostile and raiding. Now because troops are currently raised, I can't actually check whether I'm allowed to declare war on someone I was just raiding. But I suspect the game's one step ahead of me here. And yeah, because I've been raiding these guys, they'll be cooled down within which I can't actually attack them. But you know what? We'll just actually destroy these guys. It'll take them ages to get their armies back regardless. So that'll still be a good thing to do. And okay, we've just picked up the Kingdom of Armenia. That's fine. We'll pass it on to the next guy in a moment. And also flipping shockingly, the King of Kiev has not even prepared a welcoming banquet. Well, I am shocked and appalled, but screw it, I'll be gracious. Right, you. You've inherited literally everything, so yes, you may have the kingdom back as well. And all lower titles, go ahead. Ah, but irritatingly, yes, apparently I'm a bit underwhelmed by what I'm seeing. They might have just converted in name only. Okay, so all I see is a band of washed up savages. That's bloody harsh, Poseidon. Chill the flip out, so uh, yeah, no major goodwill has been generated. So basically all I really got out of that was a giant pile of piety, which I didn't really need, but I guess it's nice to have. Also, I really should start dedicating some temples all over the job. So yeah, we could do that because there's some really good bonuses to be got out of that. I mean, national revolt risk down 5% for the next 10 years is really damn nice. And disease resistance up, that's good too. That's really good. That'll actually, yeah, potentially keep this slow fever out of my territory. That's really bloody nice. Alternatively, yeah, can't deny Athena for Marshall plus two. That's good. Yeah, I can't turn down Athena, but then again, okay, normally I wouldn't be able to turn down Athena, but there is literally disease at the gate right now. So we will be taking revolt risk down, disease resistance up. I mean, Hellenism is doing its job. If I can just keep revolts to a minimum while we're converting everybody, that would be for the best. I mean, just look at this, how much Hellenism there is in Bulgaria and Greece these days. It's a really major presence on the map now. Okay, meanwhile, Kiev, those guys are now at plus 94. And you're the right religion. Any chance you're up for some vassalization? No. They just won't do it. I mean, maybe if he was de jure, he might be willing to. Maybe if he happens to be Greek, he might be willing to. But for the moment at least, there's just not enough going on there. We're close. We are close. But yeah, we're at plus 94. It caps to 100. So there's nothing more I can do there, unfortunately. A shame. Would have been nice to invite somebody new in. Okay, meanwhile over here, what we've got ourselves is, uh, yeah, 700 men. I mean, it's 5.5, but it's also only 700 men. 
Which makes me think we might just want to... Uh, let's try pushing in, see how that goes. Honestly, we're not losing much there. Move straight in. That's some really good money. That's only 2.5, so we can just push our way straight in to this too. So just move in momentarily. And that there is a Malfi's capital, just basically uh, trashed. So we're now up from... Yep, there's another 100 gold. <laughs> Right there. Screw you, you stupid bastards. Get over here into this territory. And as soon as we arrive, just start tearing down this too. Absolutely lovely. That's what I'll have to siege down. Now, that's 2,700 men behind 5.0. So I'll have to wait that one out. But beyond that... Yeah, plenty of this we should just be able to smash our way into. Also, irritatingly, Italy is actually fighting back against Croatia. Because, yeah, it's not just Italy, he's got friends. Because France has decided to get involved, which is not fun. I'm not sure how he got France involved, because yes, he's got no pact there or anything. But for some reason, France got involved. And yeah, Theseus's death has created some small problems here, which is... Unfortunately, the Kingdom of Serbia will now move over to Theseus' son, whereas everything else moves over to Poseidon. Though potentially it would look like maybe, just maybe, if this kid were to come of age before I die, then it's possible, I suppose, that actually people might decide he's the right way to go. My grandson over my second son. All right, kid, let's see what we can do for you then. Let's get you a guardian, the best guardian I've got. In fact, you know what? I'll keep an eye on you myself, all right? I shall raise you. Okay, it's also time for the Thracian Revolt to come to an end because right now the Thracian Revolt is winning. And I want Thrace to just get on with its business, please, so... You need to, you know, have some peace going on with Thrace. Stand the flip down. What do you want? 164 gold. Bargain. The war ends. There you go. Stand down. So, Thrace is now whole again, or at least, like, you know, as whole as Thrace is, because Thrace is not very whole. But it can now turn its attention back to the important business of smashing these guys in the face. Okay, here's one I wasn't expecting. So the little baby of Theseus has decided to actually declare war on uh, these guys next door. The crazy Irish kingdom, which I remind you is led by a man who at this point in history is in hiding, shrewd, fat, brawny, excommunicated, celibate, slothful, gluttonous, shy, lustful, as well as being flipping celibate, zealous, paranoid, content, a drunkard possessed by Satan and currently infirm. And despite all of that, he's got a flipping marshal of 22 and diplomacy of zero. I love this guy. He is a hero for our times. In fact, Ireland has got so embarrassed by him, they've literally declared war on flipping bits of Egypt in order to come and smash the hell out of him because they're just so sick of his nonsense. Okay, so all you want is this tiny territory down over here, which is a pretty darn small. I don't see him putting up much resistance to that. So, uh, sure, good luck with that. Okay, we finally made it through that big tough settlement over here. So now we can move on to easier things and just say, yeah, two or three weeks, we can just walk straight into here, start burning down all of this. This is just absolutely flipping lovely. There we go, updated that. So it's now on fire. That's very, very welcome indeed. So yeah, we can start taking out all of this. And just basically, you know, hammering a Malfi in the face. I mean, even if I can't actually declare war on them immediately, or rather my vassals can't, I'm happy to do this anyway. Alright, this is... Oh, that's... It's a bit expensive in terms of morale, but screw it. It's worth a lot of money. And these guys we have to wait a while for anyway, because these guys are back up to, uh, to five. So yeah, just uh, keep burning them down. Make some really good money. This is all absolutely A-OK, -okay, alright? I'm getting rich off this. Also, what's going on in Greece right now? Because I do not need Greece distracted. That is an Athenian revolt against the Duke of Hellas. Doesn't seem to be affecting... No, that doesn't affect you directly. So, uh, if you just like to, I don't know, get on with attacking Valencia and then moving into Romaine, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so, we have now burnt to the ground literally everything these bastards have on the mainland. And reduced their armies to 2,200. Absolutely sexy as anything. So, now we need to check what's going on with uh, the ability of my vassals 
to declare war. So you guys just step over here, and then you may now stand down, and due to enemy presence in our homeland. Okay, hang on, um, what's, what's going on over, ah, you guys, who are just sort of standing there but not sieging down anything. Okay, guess we're gonna have to go murder you. Right, call up some Bosnian reinforcements just to make this a sure thing, then we'll go murder that lot. And I'm not sure whether this means, like, the major Catholic conspiracy in the Empire has just, you know, failed or something, but I've lost the trait paranoid that I picked up at some point because Catholics kept leaving Bibles for me in my bedroom, but that seems to have gone away, which is not great for me, to be honest. I quite enjoy being paranoid, but I guess the extra diplomacy doesn't hurt. Right, go and murder these guys, because yes, there's just some forces of Sorrento here, and honestly, I really don't care about his tiny, tiny country, but I'll send you a bit of money, sure, why not? Okay, troops, having cleared out the forces of Sorrento, you may now definitely stand down. So just let a day or two pass here. So, I'm guessing I'm simply not allowed to uh, declare war on you. No, because you're not the head anyway. Okay, try again, declare war, and let's see what we may or may not be able to do here. Okay, the game is saying I can just go to war with them right now. The game is not saying, no, you recently actually attacked them, so that's naughty, you can't do that. Okay, your majesty, I have left the gates for you right open, alright? Just walk in there, help yourself to all of this territory. It is up for flipping grabs. Okay, so Anatolia's has woken up, but they're just picking off little bits and pieces of the Abbasid dynasty because these days the Abbasid dynasty is looking uh, flimsy. So they can just walk in and take that, but that's really not what I want. What I need is for you guys to wake up. All right, Greece, you're sitting on 15,000 troops. Get into Valencia. Make it yours. Okay, next target. Venice has got to be generating some good money, some really really good money. So let's send some troops over towards Venice and see if we can make, yeah, Venice itself a tempting target for somebody. The forces of Bulgaria, Pex, and Croatia shall head to the Venetian capital itself, while Greece, Epirus, and Bosnia shall move in on this territory down in the south. After all, a weak Venice is relatively easy pickings for Ragusa. They might be tempted to try and expand because they already went and took Ravenna, if we could present an opportunity, they might be willing to do more. And oh my, Venice itself, just look at all of these cities and churches with no fort level on them whatsoever. A single castle, and that's only got 4.5. Oh, we're gonna make, we're gonna make some good ass money. Ah, though we do need to literally come in by a boat. Well, that's fine. I've got plenty of boats, all right? Raise up the vassal boats. Now, there is a small force waiting for me here, but I have got myself enough troops to basically just uh, push straight past them. So that will be that sorted out. And as soon as that has been sorted out, we can just start uh, tearing down all of this. And this is going to generate... Oh, this is going to generate a lot of money. A lot of really good money. And... Uh, Oh my goodness, you are doing an excellent job converting the Empire, right? Core Empire, let's make it properly, uh, properly Hellenic. Oh yeah, we're just flipping walking in here. I'm loving this. So that was, uh, how much money did we just make by walking into Venice itself and sieging it down? Hang on, I want to see a money amount here. Oh, only 116. I'm underwhelmed. The territory down here, however, will be a bit slower because, yeah, this is uh, level 5, more level 5, more level 5. Okay, that's that's a little bit on the slow side. Looks like there might be easier pickings further north. Oh my, but we've got ourselves potentially a new holding in Zeta. Well, I'm not gonna say no to that. I mean, it's expensive, but I'm making a lot of money by just basically burning down Venice. Oh, here we go. We've made it through the only castle on the island of Venice. So, uh, guys, just, just move in at this point. So that's, um, that's some money right there. And then next week, we'll just be, uh, burning down this next city too. So we'll just be going in. Oh, good. There's some more money. And also, we've got ourselves a mysterious chest. 
Okay, we'll check that out in a second. Maybe we'll open that. Also, everything is prospering. And uh, in a week's time, we'll just keep burning down Venice. Thrace, if you've got any ideas about maybe moving into Venice, now would be an excellent time. Ragusa, you too. So we're just going to start uh, burning down this. This is going to take a little bit longer. You know what? Screw it. Move in. Take the rest of it. Good. So that's all been burnt down. You guys just, uh, yeah, go and smash all of this. Destroy all of this. No problem whatsoever. Then start taking all of that over. That looks nice and vulnerable. And how are we doing over here? Oh, good. Another siege has been... Oh, good. Another battle has been... Oh, this is, this is marvellous. So that's, that's like a grand I've just made by burning Venice. That, that I will gladly take, actually. That's, uh, that's pretty good. By the way, there's a town over here. Oh my goodness, I've just burned that down. Oh, a castle. I hate castles. Well done down south over there. The kid has just taken Fyam. So he did that basically without opposition. And Ireland is just... <laughs> what does Ireland actually want out of this war, by the way? So this is... Okay, it's an excommunication war. So you want to just get rid of him in favour of this guy, who is, I will say, more conventional. You're not wrong. Oh, just look at that. Venice on fire. Now that, that's what I want to see. Venice burnt, Venice with no troops. Guys, anytime you're ready, just somebody go and take them, please, because I can't, sadly. And here we go. Croatia is now de jure part of the Byzantine Empire, because they've been part of it consistently for a century. So as a result of that, Croatia now has to obey the crown laws, damn it. So stop attacking Bosnia. Okay, the attack on Venice continues to go pretty well over here. We're just sieging down on this nonsense. 5,000 troops have come over here. Romaine has responded. I kind of wanted them to, actually, because, uh, yeah, he's got a major river crossing. I have got, honestly, not the best commanders. Okay, who have I got who might be better? Any last-minute commanders? Oh, my goodness. Right, whoever you are, yes, welcome the flipper board. Some new guys have come in, and they're looking good. Okay, deploy the King of Bulgaria on the side with the larger amount of cavalry, because he's actually a cavalry specialist over there. And you, my good man, rough terrain expert. Not spectacular, but you'll do. You're a good commander in general. With a river crossing, just superior numbers of troops, we should be A-OK. -okay. So this will actually do a good job severely damaging the army of Romaine, which should make them a much softer, more interesting target to everybody else, if we're lucky. And yes, as I suspected, they are being annihilated over there. Flip and love it. Don't care about whatever that is. This over here is going very well. In fact, just move in, finish that off. That's absolutely... You just took a lot of damage. For not much benefit. Should have just waited 12 days. Right. The Romaine army has just taken uh, some severe. Severe knocks. There's some more flipping prestige and whatnot. And uh, just keep doing the Rose event. Sooner or later I will become a gardener. It's a really good event. Damn it. Right. So. The forces of Romaine have now just been uh, severely battered. The entire Romaine army is. That's it actually. It's just 2,600 right there. Meanwhile, you're just going to be right here. Yep, just move in, take all of that goodness, please, and 2.5. You're taking a lot of damage, 2.5. Please just gain flipping green fingers. Come on, I believe in you. I think you're stuck with dirty hands for the next five years regardless. I'm not sure why that event keeps firing. Oh, 0 0.4. Right, walk in, take it, burn it to the ground. Good. So that's all on fire. You guys get over here, by the way. We will be needing a handful of decent commanders, mind. Right, forces of, I don't even know, Venice, but somebody else too. We'll just smash the hell out of them. Yep, yeah, their flank's collapsing, so their centre will completely give up there. I don't know who this girl is, but I seem to be... Okay, apparently I'm educating her. I didn't realise I was educating her. Does does anyone know who she is? Because I don't actually have any wards listed. Oh, that's, um, that's the daughter of Venice. Okay, um, I feel like, okay, so we've got, um, we've got the daughter of the, the King of Venice. Right, well that's, and now we're just educating her and taking her to the to the Agora, and also significantly improving her. Um, okay, didn't realise that. Oh, we've got a lot of prisoners. Is this the entire Venetian? Well, not royal family, because election, so it's not as good as it sounds. 
Yes, here we go. You've got yourself uh, three children and a wife. And I've actually got, yeah, most of them. There's only one child I haven't got. Right, battle here going very smoothly. Just chase them off the field right over there. And straight into the... Oh, that's, that's some good, good, easy looting right there. So you guys just get on with uh, that nonsense in a handful of days. Straight over there, back up to 2,000 gold. Oh, we're just... We're rich. We're just burning Italy to the ground, right? If you guys are going to be dicks, then I'm just going to burn your entire bloody empire. Small revolt here, but don't forget, keep dedicating temples, because you can do that before the last cooldown has worn off. So, I would say on this occasion, yeah, we do actually want to have a nice Athena. So, that's plus two Marshall to me right now. So, uh, actually, now I'm curious, how many could I have at the same time? Because that lasts until, yeah, 1063. This one is already active in 1057, and... I'm pretty sure that's been around for like a year or something already, so uh, maybe you could have actually four up simultaneously, which is pretty bloody good. Okay, large parts of Venice at this point have been burnt down, so all of that, most of that, all of that, Venice itself, and also, uh, yeah, we got ourselves a little bit of progress over here in Ferrara. So, uh, Romaine in general is looking very weak, Romaine's down to 3,000 troops. Venice down to, that's not Venice, that's Venice, 1,500, looking very flimsy. Italy has reunified, is that under the new guy? I don't know if that's the new guy or not, I think it actually might be. So yeah, 4,000 troops there, but a child waiting in the wings. Okay, that's potentially of interest too, but my troops are starting to get, uh, worn down a bit. So I'd say time to, yeah, hit one group on the way out and then probably time we wander off. What are you, by the way? That's the army of Ferrara. Go and murder them if you'd be so kind. Just uh, deal with that nonsense and then we'll, uh, we'll break down our forces. Oh, and another bit of Venice's army that's actually squatting in Romain land because its own land has been burnt down too much. Oh, that's, that's good. That's fun. I enjoy that. Get out of here before Italy attacks you, by the way. That would hurt. Oh, they're flipping, running. He's actually flipping, running. <laughs> this is, this is great. And, oh my goodness, a puppy. Yes, my wife has sent me a puppy. Give me a puppy. Diplomacy, health up. And it's not going to be called Lucifer. Faithful, that's a lovely name. Especially as it came from my wife, who as you can see from the purple border there, I am in love with. There we go, caught the Venetian troops in Gaeta. So yeah, one flank's already collapsed, nothing major here. So that knocks the Venetian forces down to 1,000 men in all of the world. Good, 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 good. So you guys may now stand down. We do actually just need to give my, uh, my vassals a chance to uh, recover because plenty of them have taken some uh, severe knocks for the time being. So. Uh, just for the moment, let's just, you know, chill out, let them sort themselves out. Because, uh, yeah, we could have, like, 15,000 more, but they do need time to recharge. Also, there was a peasant revolt I didn't bother dealing with, because, uh, fortunately, yeah, Wallachia just decided to take care of it for me. So that's good. Thanks, guys. Also, change on the council, King of Anatolia is actually incapable. Okay, due to rabies. Right, so he's suffering from a very serious disease right now. Which means actually, oh, this is good. This is very good because, no, you actually flipped to the right sort of Hellenism. Well done. But your air is, wait, your air was, I swear that just changed for a second, but whatever. Okay, we do have ourselves proper Hellenic people. No, because that's the, that's the guy who's the, the king of Thrace, which I can't see because his name's too bloody long. But yeah, there we go. We do actually have this guy right here who is uh, the right Greek. So that, that's very positive. He might be about to become the baby king of Anatolia. There's his claim. He's actually the grandson of one of the previous kings, Despot Trifon, who if I remember correctly was only king for a matter of months, but it still counts. In fact, at the moment I said that, he literally died straight afterwards from the rabies. So, okay, good, good, good. We got ourselves a little baby king here. Right, send him a welcome present, and then I shall educate him myself. 
Also, the game's saying I've only got one ward, this kid, but it's also saying that, yeah, the King of Greece, I'm his guardian, so why is that not showing up as... That's... Why is he... He should be... Okay, never mind. Everything's weird. Aha! And Polyphemus can actually have a bit of a taste of council power because at this exact moment in time, yeah, we're lacking in a steward. I think the old one was just a commoner who died. So you may have that position, good sir. Though... Ooh, collecting taxes can be a little bit on the, uh, the risky side, mind. Yeah, you know what? Just spread economy technology. Plus 85 is really nice. And economy technology spreading to all of these territories means, yeah, more and more tech, which is not bad. Because all of this stuff's spreading faster. That's positive. Also, this random guy over here in Udine just reports into me. Okay, um, Thrace, you can just have that. That's fine. Basically, whatever I can do to incentivize Thrace to just keep punching Romaine in the face. Oh, and finally, legalism five. Boom. Which means I could get even more troops out of my nobles. But I'm gonna need, yeah, a council that's on side before they'll approve that. Oh, but here's even better. Completely maxed centralization. One extra domain size for free. And yeah, that's minus 10 vassals, but I've got so many kings, that's fine. I've got like, yeah, 19 spare right now. So let's get that sorted out. In play, max centralization. Flipping love it. And there we go. One extra territory for me. So, okay, just need to figure out where I'm going to expand. In fact, you know what? Time's been going by, oh, 56. As soon as we drop below 50%, we're going in again. Oh, flip me, the give Z to more territory thing just activated a second time. Well, thanks very much, Venice. So that gets me down to a thousand gold and two holding slots in Zeta. Oh my, oh the flip my. So right now, Zeusville is generating a lot of money. So how about we just build some more lovely cities for only 260 gold? That's a flipping bargain. Okay, Bulgaria is still staying active. Looks like they're planning to, yeah, finally squeeze Hungary out of existence. And in fact, the guy doing that is a new guy. So, okay, hang on. What happened to your uh, predecessor? Sorry, you had very similar moustaches. So, uh, died of severe stress, aged 47. So, okay, we got ourselves a new kid in here. Ooh, okay. The wife is admittedly the wrong sort of Hellenic, but what can you do, eh? He is pretty decent, mind. Not good enough I'd want to displace anyone, though, so we'll make him an advisor for now. But, as time goes by, might be willing to actually make him, say, Marshal. Ragusa has also woken up, and they're actually attacking Italy. So, okay, I'm guessing you don't want much other than, say, a handful of cities or something. Yeah, coast of Padua. So they're going for this territory over here, which is... Unremarkable, but I suppose it does bring them close by to, you know, this territory over here, which is not bad. Okay, one important bit of business I need to not forget down in Egypt, by the way. The son of Theseus, who right now has a very long name. So how about we just, um, change that? To Hippolytus, who was actually one of the children of Theseus via the Amazon Queen, Hippolyta. So that's much better and easier to say. And also, uh, Alexandria is generating, like... Okay, it's generating money. That's the thing. It's generating a lot of money. I'd like to hand it over, but... Okay, I'm going to keep hold of it for now. But the next time I take, say, two more territories, I will keep them and actually hand over some stuff to you down over here. I mean, you know, when I say, oh, I need to generate money, I feel like I've found a good way to generate money. It's by burning down Italy. Also, does anyone know why the, um, the new Pope is just, um, hanging out on... Lesbos, because that's that's a bit weird. He's not raiding, because he can't. He's just standing there taking attrition. And here we go. The baby king of Greece. We could get rid of Ares if we wanted to. Uh, intrigue down. Nope, that works for you. You may keep that. And bloody hell, the woman I invented for Polyphemus has died without producing a single child, which is, you know, possibly understandable given the whole yeah chaste and gay thing so okay we're just gonna have to try again with an even more fertile woman okay no one good floating around in the normal so okay we're just gonna invent a invent a new woman here and okay here we go lustful once again 
Gregorius, that's good. Greedy, patient, a Leo. This is all very good stuff. In fact, Leo's very good because that's the one that gets you Marshall. Okay, Polyphemus, I know you do not swing this way, but I really need you to produce, like, at least a couple of children. If you want to have a boyfriend on the side, that's okay. We still need a handful of children regardless. Though, to be honest, in eight years, you might be off the hook, because people might decide they'd rather have Hippolytus in charge. Okay, and Thrace is now marching north into Poland. So they're actually wanting... Okay, they're looking for... Bavaria, the natural Bavarian holdings that are in the possession of Poland, which I'm guessing would just be like, I don't know what you're trying to get out of that, but okay, Poland does not have, ah, is it this by any chance? Did you start a holy war just to get this? Okay, the young Greek lad, so we could give him temperate, which is pretty good in terms of, yeah, stewardship and whatnot, that's not bad at all, or... I can actually, what looks like, guarantee him getting Roth. Now, Roth is not bad. That's, that's Martian. You need Marshall. So, yes, you shall become Rothful. That's absolutely fine. Oh, here we go. It's happening. My plan has actually started working out here. So, the King of Wallachia has just declared a holy war on Romaine. Because I made Romaine ludicrously vulnerable. Now, they're going for... I don't think we actually need that, but... Hang on, what's, what are you going for right now? Okay, it's literally just this territory right here, which is not spectacular, but it represents Wallachia making a northern move into Romaine, which is precisely what I wanted to see. So I welcome this. Although I can't help but notice that everybody's raiding has just worn off. So possibly my vassals can't declare war immediately after raiding, but it kind of doesn't matter because... Uh, yeah, there's already been a fair bit of uh, bleeding out of the levies and whatnot. So this should be... This should still be good. This should still be a positive thing. I mean, Venice is still on fire. They haven't even managed to put the fires out yet. That's great. And here we go. Because it's a holy war, other people are going to try and get involved. But uh, unfortunately, Venice doesn't have much to uh, get involved with. Because we just burnt down all of their cities. So... Uh, Actually, you should be able to easily win this one. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. Also, he really wants to be on the council, and honestly, he deserves it. So, you know what? You can be spy master, because you're actually pretty good at that sort of thing. Just get on with scheming, and maybe we'll send you, like, some booze or something. Yes, we'll send you an alcoholic gift. Marvellous. So, we're just going to send him some wine from Rome. That's great. And we're also just going to give him a virtue. So let's see what we've just given him. Charitable, some bonus diplomacy. And you know what? We're going to make you better as well. We're going to inspire you in return for some piety. That's a really fun thing right there. So Marshall potentially or... Yeah, diplomacy or stewardship. So stewardship, that's fine. That's a good thing to have. Right, so you're looking much better. And also... Wait, did I... Did I accidentally just get rid of Greedy? I don't know if I just accidentally got rid of Greedy. Because I swear you just had Greedy and I didn't really mean for you to actually have that. But okay, fine, I'm sure it's okay. Okay, Bulgaria's war against Hungary has been won. So Hungary is now down to... Uh, yeah, literally one guy sitting there with the Kingdom of Hungary, the Duchy of the Territory he's in, and one county. That's... That's literally it. Meanwhile, up north, Ragusa seems to have got together, yeah, over 9,000 men. So they're just dealing with this nonsense over here very easily. They'll be able to actually claim some of that. So that's good. That hurts Venice and also expands Ragusa's territory and wealth. That works for me. You know what? I think it's time. I've got plenty of money coming in right now, plus 70. Even though Alexandria is a valuable, valuable territory... It's time to begin the evacuation. When I say the evacuation, that's that's um, it's not enough boats to be uh, to be perfectly honest. Okay, um, we'll begin the evacuation in a second. I just need some more boats. That's enough boats. Right, you guys get over here uh, and just yeah, pick up these lads. That'll be lovely. Baby Hippolytus, I'm going to give you Alexandria because if you happen to you know lose it or whatever, doesn't really matter because it just comes straight back to me. 
And with that, my retinues shall return home. Absolutely flipping lovely. And somebody blessed has passed. I don't know why we're honouring that, given he's Catholic, but, you know, there's always been a bit of religious confusion going on, to be honest. Right, uh, just get my guys home, please. Because I bet by now we've probably got a bunch of spare... Oh, yeah, we've got big spare retinue space. We could definitely have more retinue forces. And now all we need to do is for this guy right here to make the decision to, yeah, come and grab this bit of land. That's all he needs to do. Also, he's handed over... Okay, he's handed over Alexandria to a Lord Mayor, which makes sense, because Alexandria is, like, you know, a big city. So, I guess that makes sense, sure. But, uh, hopefully, he'll decide the sensible thing to do is, I don't know, clear out the Catholics that are living within his empire, maybe, at some point. Okay, so, we've got over 2,000 heavy cavalry in that group that's just made it back home. That's plenty of flippin' heavy cavalry. Probably best... We just get ourselves some, yeah, heavy infantry and archers. Basically, just spam as much of that as we can get away with. That's going to be a good, solid bunch of units right there. So, you guys all merge together. I feel like we've got plenty of money for the time being. So, boost that up to maximum fulfillment, please. And yeah, that's actually going to be another 1,600 heavy infantry. So, we'll just get working on that. That will be a bit on the expensive side, but it's not so bad. Because the heavy troops are okay. And, more importantly, precisely what I was hoping for. I've become diligent because of training the dog. Dogs are just the best event. Because you can get diligent pretty easily off them. And diligent is wonderful. Okay. And we got ourselves a bit of a blend of good and bad news going on here. So, okay. This guy died young. But he wasn't that good, so I don't really care that much, to be honest. That was, yeah, King Eusebius of Wallachia. So he's just died at 33 of bad case of the flu. So as a result of that, Kingdom of Wallachia has just come straight back to me. But it would appear, potentially, that, uh, does that mean, yeah, the previous King of Trebizond has just inherited... Yes, so Trebizond and Sicily are now reunited. And with that, you've inherited the war, which is going very much in your favour so far. So honestly, that's A-OK. -okay. I'm broadly happy to just let that stand and take this opportunity to create a new, better Wallachia. Here we go. This duchy, right here, this duchy 100% should belong to Wallachia, right? Just A-U-R-A kingdoms. Yeah, this whole area ought to belong to that. But actually, hang on, am I even allowed to give you that? I don't know if I'm even allowed to give you that because I don't know if I can give the kingdom title to a woman. Is that allowed? No, I am allowed to. Good. So that's absolutely fine. I was wondering if the gender laws were going to get in my way there. So uh, you may have Kingdom of Wallachia and you may eat Oltenia while you're doing it. That is 100% a-okay. So, Wallachia is now a significantly better sized kingdom right there, which just slightly reduces the power of Bulgaria. Not much, but a bit. But yeah, the reunification of Sicily and Trebizond actually makes, yeah, this territory much more powerful. You are more powerful than your predecessor, making you hopefully more comfortable with attacking into Italy. Though the downside is uh, you might decide to... No, you don't have a border with Georgia anymore because Bulgaria came in and took this. Okay, hopefully you will consider your primary target the best opportunity near you to be Romaine. Though that guy was also my spy master, so okay, hang on. Just check I've not got any uh, vassals out in the cold right now. There's you, but you suck and you also love me, so I don't care. Okay, basically a free pick, lovely. Ah, here's a good loyal vote. My own flipping wife. So, you may be spy master. In fact, that's three loyal votes right there. Okay, uh, how long until I can change... The laws again. Uh, law in... Oh, bloody hell. Like, three years away. Dear, oh, flippin' dear. I literally sailed away from Alexandria, like, two weeks ago, and already the raiders are here, and he's not doing anything about it. 
You have enough troops, just go and smash them. Okay, siege is complete down over here. One small force went up ahead here, and they're about to lose, but they are going to weaken the morale of the Romain army. So I believe, yeah, you guys are now heading north to deal with the rest of it. This war's got to be going pretty well for you. Also, apparently I did a terrible job at educating the daughter of, yeah, the actual um, King of Venice. So, oh well. Really doesn't matter. At some point, I will give them back to her, by the way. And, oh, I might even be able to convert her to, to Zeusiness. Okay. And, no, she's just gained patience instead. I mean, that's, it, it's good. It's good, I suppose. That's, that's positive. Okay, so, Trebizond's a bit overstretched right now, purely because, yes, other Catholic nations are jumping in, including Amalfi. But now, now I'm curious... If I was to raise up a force right here and then put it into looter mode, could I basically unofficially get involved in various wars by virtue of forcing myself to become a hostile and then just attacking? So we're just gonna, yeah, let you get a bit of morale up first. That's all absolutely lovely. Give you some good. What on earth is going on with all of the... Bloody commanders, where have they gone? Oh, it's a weak bunch today. These guys are awful. So here we go. Activate loot mode. May I now begin looting territories that are technically at war with my vassals? Is that allowed? Because it would appear that I am. And even though I'm not supposed to be involved in this war, because, you know, lieges aren't allowed to just say to vassals, hey, I'll help you out. Actually, it would appear that I sort of can. Oh my, well that's... that's fascinating. So here we go. I'll just be taking myself a bit of extra bonus money and... Okay, that's... that's not what I was expecting. Actually, that's not what I was expecting at all. There was no sign whatsoever that Poseidon was unwell. He was just old. As it turns out, I mean 60 in Crusader Kings 2. It's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. And I'm pretty sure just about everybody liked him. So, yes, absolutely. He shall receive the most ridiculously over-the-top burial that we can come up with. Because, oh, this is... This is sad. Like, okay, let's just... Let's just consider Poseidon for a moment. And, in truth, he did not grow the empire as much as some people did. He was not the fiercest warrior, but at the beginning of his life, he sat down and said, even though I am in the greatest position of power in the world, regardless, I shall be a good man. And just look at him at the end of his life. Virtue, 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 virtue. No voices. He helped those around him. He went to his courtiers and he made them better people than they were before he met them. He reached out to the pagans of Eastern Europe, and he brought them into the fold, not by fire and sword, but by educating them. He was a teacher. He was our first Pontifex Maximus. He brought us back to the noble, old ways. Oh, oh, Poseidon, you were truly, truly mighty. Just what a wonderful wonderful leader you have been. Never corrupted either. Didn't cheat on his wife. Didn't go elsewhere looking for more children. Anything of that nature. So uh, yeah, just a good man all round. Congratulations, you magnificent bastard. And rest in peace. And so instead begins the reign of Pontifex Maximus Polyphemus. And uh, as I would have suspected, yes indeed. As he currently has a uh, no children, the next in line is actually going to be Despot Hippolytus for the time being, who is technically of Serbia. We'll, we'll be sorting that out momentarily. Hopefully he shouldn't kick up a fuss about that being taken off him. That should all be absolutely fine because now, now Serbia's over, over here. Okay, we'll, we'll fix that momentarily. It'll be fine. But I'll say, for a young guy who's never actually had any commands, any provinces to manage, he's good. He's pretty good as a starting point. A decent education in building up a fortune. Diligent, kind, chaste, charitable. 
a bit paranoid, but, you know, can't blame him. He's been thrown into a position of power very young that he was never expecting. He was always expecting his brother Theseus to be the one who actually took, you know, the big jobs. He's been thrown into this unexpectedly, but he's got some decent stats on him right there. 13 Diplomacy, 10 Marshal, 21 Stewardship. That's... That's not bad, though arguably he lacks the cunning of his predecessors, or indeed his brother, Theseus. His intrigue, a lot lower. Potentially, he's going to need someone to uh, help him out with that sort of business. Is his wife going to help him out? His wife is not going to help him out with that business. And uh, yes, whether or not this man will ever produce an heir is uh, questionable. Though there are things we can, of course, do now we're controlling him to help out with that. So... Yes, we do potentially need to groom an heir. So that's going to get fertility up because he's accepted that it's his responsibility to do so. And diplomacy up. 15 with that. That's good. Fertility up. Health up. Stay alive for the time being. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. Okay, if I revoke the Kingdom of Serbia, because I do need that, that is going to, yeah, really annoy Hippolytus. But our vassals will not object. We've got a claim on it. This is legitimate. So, must have 200 prestige. Wow, I don't even have the prestige to do that. Okay, well, we will be doing that as time goes by. That's, that's absolutely fine. Oh, yeah. The vassals are happy with me. They really liked my predecessor, so they're going to be chill for the time being. Also, we've inherited a really nice council here. Large number of people in hiding, children, queens, etc. So, actually... Most people do not expect to be on the council. The only two adult males not in hiding are, yeah, Bulgaria and Thrace. Shove them into the advisor slots and all of a sudden, we've got a clean bill to just pick a council of whatever I want. So, you, welcome back. Yes, statecraft. Get that threat down, please. That's, that's important. Meaning... Good old Hippolytos, the actual strategos of Samos. He's very, very good at this sort of nonsense. He can just get on with doing a little bit of troop training. We have got ourselves some random courtier who will make a good steward. And on top of that, yeah, you, my good man, because you're not important, I don't care if you try and collect some taxes. You just go flipping nuts. My mother adores me, so she can maintain her position as spy master. Lovely. And we'll just go for a nice loyalist as my chief priest. And you can just get on with... Uh, oh my goodness, look at that. All of that blue is Hellenic. True, already Hellenic. Absolutely flipping beautiful. You know what, you? Get over into Rome. Let's get Rome believing in the true faith. And while he could join the Stoic Society, yeah. At this point, we do not need fertility to be even lower. So how about... The Hermetic Society, he's just clever enough to get in there. So I'd say that would be a good place to be because his father was remarkably intelligent. I would like to think that Polyphemus would like to emulate his father. So in he flipping goes. Not everyone's thrilled with the new stuff, by the way. Can't help but notice there's immediately been a, uh, a Catholic uprising. Well, that's fine. All right, some people haven't come round yet. Give it some time, they will. By the way, you, um, you're not going to be leading. That's, that's not your thing, all right? You are not the most competent uh, fighter, which is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Have we actually inherited everything, by the way? Sometimes you just sort of lose stuff. Oh, yes, the, the strange chest, which doesn't do anything. Okay, that's, that's mysterious. So, we've inherited, yes, a very volatile situation right now. Northern Italy burns. Greece is strong and ready to move in. Thrace is just causing all sorts of lipid trouble. Croatia wants to move in. Ragusa wants to move in. Bulgaria is looking for places to expand. And in a matter of flipping weeks, my threat will drop below 50%. And at that point, it's time for another flipping holy war. So uh, we have got plenty to get on with here. Emperor Polyphemus and of course Pontifex Maximus Polyphemus as well. Uh, he has got a big task ahead of him. We need to find a way to seize these territories without, you know, having the entire world uh, turn on us. But I think we're on to a good thing here. My vassals 
are starting to cooperate. Just look at that. They're coming in from all sides. Italy is being squeezed out. They can only hold on for so long. So, coming up very, very soon indeed, we are going to do it. We are going to form that Roman bloody empire, even if it kills me, and it probably bloody will as well. We shall see how Polyphemus gets on as his reign begins in full next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, this this no, guy's no, enjoying no. that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. <laughs> oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then oh, come the chariots. Yeah.